Hey guys, welcome back. All right, so picking up where we left off yesterday, we're about to build some brackets to get our all these panels put together, like we talked about. We got that angle measured from here to here. That's 35 degrees from this axis. Sling over 30, swing over 35. So we're about to do all that. And we're trying to get some of the details worked out because it sucks when you do stuff and you, then later you realize you should have done something else. So for example, since we're bolting these two together, right here we're probably going to unbolt this and build a new piece that goes here and put this behind it so like there'll be a flat piece that bolts these two together and then you'll have this bracket for this another thing we did we grabbed a couple of gauges and went ahead and installed them to make sure that they actually have room so you can see over here like there's enough room that we should be able to put them next together which i checked that last time but anyway just making sure nothing interferes it's close but it looks like we're good now one thing we did catch when we were looking at this to check fitment, we saw that sticker for 12 volt vehicles only. The company from these gauges is called Max Tow. So maybe they're just saying that they don't work on 24 volt systems. But my question is, do they work on 16 volt systems? So I sent them an email. We'll see what they say. But uh, I've got a backup plan. So back when we were designing to have a 12 volt battery with a 17 volt system, we also planned to have a constant 13.8 volt system. So. We didn't do the 17 volt system because with really, really heavy duty inductive loads, I had more voltage ripple than I think should be acceptable. So we didn't put it in there. However, gauges should not be an inductive load and they shouldn't be much current either. They're just gauges. They should pull like hardly anything. So I think we can just buy an off the shelf unit that'll convert whatever you give it to 13.8. Only uh, downside is we'll have to eat up one of our spares on this panel probably or i don't know we gotta think about it but it's just how it's going to be implemented because i don't have a spot here right now for that unit it'll have to go somewhere and then wires will come into this to do the voltage conversion but we may need to, we may need to do that for the gauges we'll see uh we'll see what they say all right so for now we move on if we do have to buy it we can get it quick our leds should be here tomorrow which is nice because we need those so, all right, we're going to get to building this panel, see if we can get all these brackets built. All right, guys, we're going to get back to that panel in a minute, but I want to show you something. We made a couple of mistakes on one of our diagrams, and I just kind of figured it out. So previously, if we zoom in, you can kind of see this charging plug used to go right to the battery. That seems like that wouldn't be a problem, right? Because now the new routing just goes over here, so electrically it seems like it's the same. We'll come back to that in a second. And then the second plug, we have another charging plug. So just as a recap, the battery's in the back of the car, so I have a charging plug that'll dangle outside the battery box. You can plug in to charge the battery. And then in the front of the vehicle, there's gonna also be a charging plug like hanging in the front bumper. Same thing, you can plug in and charge the battery. Now here, there's a giant big battery wire that goes to the starter motor. So what I would previously done was I just looped that right to here. That way this wire is short and efficient, and then I get to use the big heavy wire going back here. So it's just a better way of doing it, right? No, this is dangerous. So what would you expect to happen if you turn the kill switch off? Well, you would expect it to kill everything. However, that, on that is only true if power only enters one side of the switch. When I had this wire jumpered here, technically if you had a charger plugged into here, charging power would flow through this wire here through this big heavy wire back to here and then from here it feeds all the fuse blocks so in fact you could turn the car you could kill the kill switch and if the charger was plugged in it would power the entire vehicle not intuitive not safe probably could get by as far as the rules go because they're not going to like check my car when it's plugged in charging but just strictly from a safety standpoint if the car was charging and there was an electrical problem you would expect that hitting the kill switch kills everything. And in this case, it wouldn't. It wouldn't kill the car. So we changed that. Now this wire loops over here and every power source ties together at this point on the kill switch. So whether it's the positive from the battery, the positive from this charging plug, or the positive from that charging plug, all of them terminate at the same point. And if you kill the kill switch, all power sources are disconnected from the vehicle. The one thing that this kill switch doesn't do is disconnect the charging plugs from the batteries themselves. Those are always connected. I don't think that's a problem, but, because I mean, you gotta charge it, but uh, anyway, just a note. But it does kill the entire car, so that's important. 
Now, one other thing we haven't drawn yet, but I'll just mention it because I think this is pretty important. So we're going to put a thing here, uh, a current sensor. Sorry, that was out of focus. We're going to put a current sensor going into the battery or out of the battery. One of our gauges on our, uh, we have voltage and battery amps, and I want to have battery amps on the display. So when you're driving the car, or when it's running or idling, you can actually see how many amps are coming out of the battery. But for that to work, I can only have a single wire coming off the battery, and then the sensor has to be installed here. Now, if I wire it exactly like you see now, since this is the T-point, uh, well, this is just charging plugs, but once it goes here, there it tees off and goes to everything, this sensor will show all the amps going out of the battery when you're running the car, and if you start charging the car, whether the car's on or off, it won't matter, It'll show you how many amps are going into the battery when you're charging. That's super useful on a lithium because lithiums have uh, constant current and constant voltage. So say you have a 20 amp charger, it'll charge at 20 amps until it gets like close to fully charged and then it switches to constant voltage and you'll see the voltage stay constant but the current will go down. So if you only have a volt gauge and you see constant voltage, you really don't know how charged your battery is, but if you have a current meter, you can watch it trail off and as it gets closer to zero, you know you're getting approaching a full charge. So those are some of the changes we made. Frankly, I thought this diagram was correct and essentially we missed where the current sensor goes, we missed this charging plug, and we missed that charging plug. So that's three mistakes already found. Uh, so whoops. One of the downsides is I got to run this wire. It's going to be longer because it's got to go all the way back here now. So that's heavier, and I'm not sure if I purchased enough wire to do that. I did add extra wire. I always do this <clears throat> when I design something. I figure, hey, buy some extra, but I don't know if I bought enough extra to go all the way to the back of the car. I hope I did, but we don't know yet. Uh, so worst case, we'll have to buy another piece for that. But uh, yeah, figured I'd mention this real quick. Uh, having a good plan is super critical when you're wiring a car because it's... Electrical is hard to visualize, at least to me, this is hard to visualize in your head, like the entire wiring system of a vehicle. I got to do stuff like this. I got to have diagrams where I can think about it, make sure it makes sense. And then when you go to the car, you're like, hey, wire, battery to switch, size number two, wire, plug to here, size number eight. Like that's how, then it's just like following and you just do it step by step. That works great. So anyway, enough of this. Let me show you the car. We, uh, we made some progress on that uh, switch panel. All right, guys, check it out. So we've been working on our panel. We've got a bracket that bolts it to the car. We built a bracket that connect these two together. You see these four bolts right here. And then there's more over here. So there's a bracket that goes behind this that's angled. So you can see, you can kind of see that those are angled. But anyway, we got that built. This is just acting as a temporary brace for the moment. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. So we've got our top row. So I'm holding the camera kind of like where my eyes would be if I'm looking straight ahead. We can see the green lights right in the middle. We got our warning lights like we talked about, and our gauges are pretty decent view. You don't have to look too far uh, to see them. So I like that. You will note that the top of this gauge is cut off a little bit, but if I squint my head down a little bit, you get a nice clear view anyway, so not really a deal breaker. But yeah, pretty happy how that's going. Um, this is better than I thought. I really like the feel of this too. I love being in a car as far as having stuff wrap around the driver, so very purposeful. I like that. Um, anyway, moving on along, let me show you. We've been working. So we're getting ready to wire everything, right? Which means getting everything in place and getting all of our plugs and connectors. Now we purchased every plug I could think of, except for like the factory plugs for certain things that we couldn't either get or I just wanted to use the stock ones. So let me show you that. Okay. So you see these three connectors big one is the headlight, the blue one is the corner lamps on the front bumper, and that other one is the blinker on the headlight. Headlight, corner light, thing on the bumper. That's the three plugs for those. Got the same thing for the other side. They're over there. And then these guys, I don't know if we're going to use any of these or all of these at least. This is the one that fits the crank sensor. We're going to probably use it because I was not able to purchase. I couldn't purchase this. These other three I have purchased is the cam sensor, TPS and idle valve. So I went ahead and cut these out of the harness with like a pigtail, but we have all those plugs. So we're probably just gonna, yeah, it's this idle TPS cam sensor back there. So anyway, we'll probably use the new ones, but I went ahead and cut the old ones. 
Nothing else I can reference the colors just to make sure I get the polarity correct on like the cam and the crank and TPS and I have no idea if this has polarity but whatever the factory was we'll just match it to uh, be safe. So yeah, got our plugs for that and then in the back of the car. So we're not going too fancy but I do want my, we're not going to have brake lights but we're going to have tail lights. So I grabbed those plugs, you can see the wires dangling. So we had to chop up a stock harness to get these connectors but who cares? I actually have two of those. So we chopped one. And I still got this one. Not that I need it, but I have it. So anyway, that's just getting some of the plugs ready. Um, I guess we're going to keep going. All right, guys. So we're going to knock off for the night. I'll show you what I've been working on the last probably couple hours. But it'll just be brief because these are kind of not interesting. These are the 20 switches going across. Roughly what they're going to be. So we ran into a problem. Let me show you. Okay, so we're going to run, this is an Arduino Mega with a shield on it that gives you these uh, terminals. And they got little screws and you can just back the screw out, stick a wire in. Makes it really easy to hook stuff too and it comes with a case and that's all great. This is going to drive the warning panel. At this point, I think I'm going to run all my sensors to this because this has a lot of ADC channels. So this is probably just going to be the one main Arduino that communicates with uh, the MS3 Pro, the warning system, etc. This has a VN, well, excuse me, it has a DCN here, which is actually separate somewhere on this thing. There it is, VN. So this has a diode. When it goes in, there's a diode, and then it goes to VN. So I did a little research. I need, I want to use the regulator that's in here to supply 5 volt to the sensors. So I've got to supply this with approximately 7 volts. Now, you can go all the way to 12 volts. In fact, you could even go a little higher, but the problem is this has a linear regulator, now, linear regulators are accurate, so I want to use a linear regulator. But if I feed this, say, 12 volts, 14 volts, 17 volts, whatever, there's so much voltage drop happening in the linear regulator, it's going to overheat, and then we're going to have a problem. So what i got to do is build something that steps the voltage down. In this case, I'm going to go with about 7 volts, and then 7 volts is going to go to this, and then this only has to step it down from 7 to 5, so there won't be a lot of heat dissipation happening in here. And we'll have good, uh, a good stable, high-quality 5-volt output from a linear regulator. And we'll have the low losses because we're feeding it a voltage that's just above the minimum for that regulator. Okay, what does that mean, practically speaking? Well, let me tell you what it means. We got a battery. This thing's going to be... It's a 16-volt battery, but this thing can go to like 17 and a half or so once it's like fully charged. I should probably go see what that number is. It might even be higher than that. But the point is, I need a way, I need a lower voltage. Now, here's the thing. We're not sure if these gauges will accept, say, 17 and a half volts or not. We're not sure. So what I'm thinking tentatively, and I've already bought the stuff to do this, I just ordered it. What I'm thinking is I'm going to buy a single DC to DC converter that goes from whatever you feed it to whatever you want. So in our case, we'll give it roughly 16 volts. And we're going to have it output 13.8. And then what I'm going to do, let me show you the back side of this panel, because this is way easier to see on this than it is to understand diagrams. So this short little one right here in the middle, we're going to feed this with 13.8 volts instead of 17 volts or 16 volts. So essentially one of these fuses from one of these uh, main ones, these are going to be hooked to battery voltage. One of these outputs will go to the supply that converts battery voltage to 13.8. 13.8 goes here. We got four outputs at 13.8. Those can go and hit, say, the gauges, uh, the Arduino power supply, which, by the way, I gotta have another supply for that because, like I said, it needs to go to like seven volts. So we're gonna end up buying two of those. One that goes from, thir from battery voltage to 13.8, and another one that you can feed it whatever, and it'll go to seven. Well, it's all adjustable. But anyway, the point is, we're going to have to buy a couple of those. they got to get bolted in here somewhere. I was hoping to avoid that, but it's kind of unavoidable. With this high voltage stuff, not every component's going to be compatible. So the good news is we're only doing resistive loads. For, I mean, like 90-something 90, whatever, 90 percent resistive loads. So it shouldn't be a big deal, but I had to order them, so we're waiting on those to get here. Another thing of note, man, this isn't short, but uh, another thing of note we have some temperature sensors like gm temperature sensors uh what else there's a few others where we got to install hardware to make them work 
So what I'm thinking about, I, I gotta go figure this out exactly what we need. This is the details in a build that just kill you. Anybody that watches YouTube has seen this where like builds that never get finished or they just drag on forever. There's a lot of little details that go into this. So the gauges come with sensors. You just install it and they work. But I'm just installing some of my own sensors. Now, some of these sensors are just like zero to five volt outputs, in which case you give them power ground, run their signals into an analog input. That's probably about all you got to do. Maybe throw an RC filter on these, but you may not have to, or you may can just software filter it. But there's, I think I have some GM AIT sensors. Maybe I don't, I got to look. But if I do, it may require some additional hardware to bias those. So I may put a little box with some resistors and like package it kind of neatly and hide it to integrate that special hardware if it's necessary. Another example, but I'm going to try to hide it somewhere else is flyback. So we've got like an electric water pump, electric cooling fan, perhaps a couple other inductive loads. So we may have to wire some resistors in the harness. I'm not resistors, diodes in the harness for flyback. We got the diodes. So little stuff like that. We want to plan it, put everything in the right spot to protect stuff. So anyway, it's a little after eight o'clock at night. We're knocking off kind of early because we got to get ready for work tomorrow. And then we, you know, if there's anything we know of that we need to get ordered, go ahead and get it ordered so I can get on the way and uh, try to get some more of this done next time we're at the shop. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's been a lot of work, but it's really cool to see the electrical start coming together. Man, it's been a long time coming, but I'm looking forward to getting this knocked out because when she's wired up, I mean, as far as running goes, it's just pour fuel in and fire it up, I believe. There's a couple little details mechanically, like seat belts and that seat back brace, but I mean, not much stopping it from running. It's just wiring pretty much. So let's get this done. All right, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this, and until next time, y'all take it easy.